Shalom, brothers and sisters. Welcome to this week's Sabbath service. I want to start off by reading a scripture, and this is from John 14, 27. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. By way of announcements, I do want to start off by reminding you that we do have a form if you'd like to become either a member of the ecumenical movement or a member of the Church of Jesus Christ. If you go to the menu at cjccf.org, there's a link that says join, and also on the church website, which is thechurchwebsite.org, there's a link at the top that will take you back to the fellowship website for the same form. And that lets us know who wants to be involved, where you are, how involved you'd like to be, and allows us an opportunity to attempt to reach out to contact you. I will let you know that when you do fill out the form, we do have uh, a couple of people that will potentially reach out to you to see how you'd like to get involved, how, what we can do for you, how we can help you. And we will make two, maybe three contacts. And if you don't respond by then, then at that point, it'll be up to you to get back with us when you feel comfortable. We don't want to be pushy. The other thing I would like to bring up as far as announcements <clears throat> is that we are still collecting funds for the temple and for general church welfare. We need to raise funds in order to keep the business expenses going because unfortunately, all the things that we provide do cost money. So I do want to thank those that have given generously. To those that have not, there is a link on both cjccf.org and thechurchwebsite.org where you can go to either pay tithing or give a donation. And please keep in mind, just a reminder, to us, tithing is 10%. That's what the Lord has asked for. And anything beyond that is an offering. But the tithe can go to whatever it is the Lord tells you to go to. We're not demanding that you give us 10% of what you make. Pray, pray on it. Follow the directions the Lord has for you. And if the Lord says, give to this charity or give to this homeless person as you're walking down the street, you know, follow the Holy Spirit. We are asking for just a minimum of five, ten, twenty dollars. If you can give more, that's great. But if everybody that was in our database gave us just five dollars, we would be very we would be able to meet all of our business needs, all of our business expenses, and pay our tithing. Because the Lord has commanded us to, to take 10% off of what you give us and give that to a charity outside of the Latter-day Saint movement. So, whatever you feel comfortable giving, particularly if you can set up an automated monthly donation so that you don't forget, we thank you for your, for your contribution. If you have not signed up yet if you've not donated we do ask that if you can afford to and the spirit moves you to do so to please give we would like to actually start marketing the things that we have we want to spend some money on letting people that need to know that we're here know that we're here we appreciate that many of you like and share these videos we want to be able to do a bit more we have to make sure that our bills can be paid first and we're also still trying to collect funds so that we can build a tabernacle or a temple by land. And again, that's another reason why we need people to sign up so we know where you are, at least generally. If the majority of people are in, we'll say, Idaho, then, which they're not, then we obviously wouldn't want to build in Florida. It'd be too far away. So we want to prayerfully try to figure out where we need to build something that we can all meet at. As far as prayer requests, oh, I'm sorry, one last thing on that, and that is we are going to, in 2023, uh, try to start doing physical meetings at least once a year. Our goal is to grow to three times a year. So if we don't have the tabernacle for that yet, we will still find some sort of a space that we'll be able to rent. So again, we will need financial help for that. Uh, most likely in like a camping area, so that because it's going to be in the spring, summer, and fall, so that we can get together and we can worship together as saints and meet together as saints. 
We will have more details on that next year. For prayer requests, we do have a brother who had surgery recently. He is still recovering from that. Please pray for him. We have another brother who is sick. He has shingles. Please pray for him. I have been in contact with some people on, on the phone, not, not in person or online. And uh, <clears throat> yeah, not in person. They have COVID. I really don't want to go through that again. Please pray for these brothers and sisters that are sick. And when I got up this morning, I'll tell you that I woke up with my children in a panic because our youngest gets up generally before everyone else and the power went out where we live. And he was scared. Obviously, the power is back on now. I'm a little behind schedule, but moving forward. But as we sat on the living room couch and hung out and you know, just spending time together as me and three of my boys... The temperature in our house, it, I mean, we have a well-insulated house. So it's not like it just plummeted and we were suddenly freezing. But by the time the electricity came back on, it had dropped a couple of degrees. And it was a little noticeable. It wasn't noticeable, noticeable, but, you know, it, it was noticeable. And it just made me think about all the people as winter is coming here in, in this part of the world that they don't have a physical home, that it's going to be harder for them to get food. And one of the things I thought about was the fact that it's we don't carry cash anymore, so it's hard to give money to the homeless and to the poor. So I would ask that you please pray for those that are homeless, those that are struggling to keep the lights on, struggling to keep the house warm, those that are turning their thermostats lower than they need to be because they just can't afford the increase in the cost of electricity. We need to make sure we're doing our part to help take care of these people. Let us also be thankful for those that are seeking. Let's pray for the seekers. Let's be thankful for those that have found the fellowship and found a home here. Let's welcome them. We appreciate you coming and being here. Whatever struggles you're going through, we're here to help. If you'd like to pause the video and take a moment to say a prayer, sing a hymn, please do so now and we'll be here when you get back. And now for the unity portion of our service, I'm going to recite the Shema, first in Hebrew and then in English. And then I'm going to pause to allow all of us to recite the Shema together in English as one. Shema Yisrael, Yeva Elohenu, Yeva Echad. Hear, O Israel, Yeva is our Elohim, Yeva is unity. As I stated last week, I'm still a bit new to Advent. I did a little bit more looking into it this past week. And if you notice, looking at the calendar, I've set up all of our Sabbath services as the Advent calendar. So we have our subject matter, what we'll be talking about. And you may have noticed that this week is peace, the candle of peace. When I was praying on this this morning, I, I obviously already had a scripture picked out and I've already read it. I was thinking, what does that mean to have that peace? Not the peace of the world, but the peace of Christ. And a scripture came to mind. And this scripture is from Doctrines of the Saints 2C, which is Community of Christ Doctrine and Covenants 161. And in verse 14 for Doctrines of the Saints, which would be 2A for the Community of Christ, Doctrine and Covenants, it says, Become a people of the temple, those who see violence but proclaim peace, who feel conflict yet extend the hand of reconciliation, who encounter broken spirits and find pathways for healing. I still remember the first time I read this revelation that was given to us through the prophet Grant McMurray. I just 
feel that that particular scripture really says exactly what we and the fellowship of Christ have been called to be. Not to do, but to be. To be a people of the temple. If you look in our revelations, it says over and over again, from Joseph Smith until today, build a temple, build a temple, build a temple. Why? I think there's layers to that. I think that that peace comes when we first realize that we, our physical bodies, are a temple. The house of the Holy Ghost. The house of the Holy Spirit. I believe that when we have a temple in our home, we, we create a place. Our homes are our safe space. We create a spiritual safe space in our homes where we can gather individually or as families or even invite our friends into our sacred space, into our, our temple, so that we can, to one another, proclaim peace. I believe that as we gather into congregations, as a people, as we're building the kingdom of God, not a church as in, in the man-made sense with creeds, but as a kingdom of God, that we, the temples that we build will be a place where we can gather as a people so that we can proclaim peace. We talked about this before. The purpose of our temples isn't merely for rituals. It's going to be to feed the poor. It's going to be to teach people how to be self-sufficient, how to rely on each other. Those two things are not opposites. We need to learn how when, when, we, don't, when we have any kind of hardship, how can we go about helping others in spite of our lack of for ourselves this peace that we talk about in our world i think the best example of that is military power people like to say that the united states the country that i live in is a peaceful country but how can we be when we have so many weapons of mass destruction pointed at every corner of the world when we have military bases all over the world. That's the peace of this world. I'm going to flex my muscles, I'm going to show my might, and then there'll be peace. But we know it doesn't work. We went to Vietnam to save the Vietnamese from communism. We failed. That wasn't a war, technically, it was a police action. And we were unsuccessful in spite of all of our military prowess. Then we went to the Middle East in, in my lifetime. Our first Gulf War started the year I graduated high school, 1992. And just recently did we finally leave, and I'm not sure how much we've actually left it behind. That was literally a war for generations that we didn't win. We never won it. We went in, we flexed our muscles, and once, once we went away, we, we proved that we had lost that war from the very beginning. True peace cannot come through violence. True peace cannot come through war. I want to testify to you that I spent a decade, about a decade, working for a nonprofit organization fighting for changes in Washington, D.C. And I really thought that I was making a difference. But people with more money had more power. And in the end, the money always won. We did a really good job. We made sure that there were concessions. Before we lost, a lot of concessions. We stopped bills from passing for years that should have passed within a month from the time they were ready to put it onto the floor to a vote. I ask myself, why? What is it that makes what we're doing here not successful? How can we do better without having billions of dollars? And this was around the same time that I was fighting the call from God to the ministry. One thing I learned is that the work I did there was preparing me for the work of the fellowship. It was teaching me why the peace of this world doesn't work and why we need to focus on the peace of Jesus Christ. What I learned from this is that when I talk to someone and I say, here are all the points, here are all the logical reasons why 
we should do X, Y, and Z. Here's how it's going to benefit the country. Here's how it's going to benefit the individual. Here's how it's going to benefit various communities. Here's how it's going to benefit the world. At the end of the day, it didn't matter if somebody can make money taking away those benefits. So what can change? Sure, God could show me where some diamond mine or gold mine or something is, set up a circumstance so that I buy the land crazy cheap and I'm able to get that resource and suddenly I'm the rich guy telling people what to do. I'm the one buying the laws. But eventually the money runs out. Eventually I die and who knows what happens to the next person that gets that money. But if we can change hearts instead of minds, if we can bring souls to Jesus Christ, then we can have true peace. When the Lord told me to study Kabbalah, the first thing that stood out to me, the first thing, was the fact that in Kabbalah, we don't do missionary work. We don't knock on doors. We don't tell people they're going to hell. We live our lives and we let the light, as a Mormon Kabbalist, I'll say it like this, we let the light of Christ shine from us and those that are drawn to the light will come and they will learn and then they will become that source of light that will draw others in. That's how we do missionary work. There are people that love to try to debate me online, on the phone, in person, but there's no point in that. At the end of the day, who, who's the winner? I would say neither of us. As long as we're fighting with the spirit of contention, we're both losers. But if we can come together and say, I have this idea, I have this idea, let's, let's look at this. Not to see who's right, but to learn from one another in the spirit of Christ. That to me is Mormon Kabbalah. That to me is Mormonism. That to me is the Christian message. That's how we move forward as a movement as Latter-day Saints. For too long, we've tried to move forward by saying, this is the one true church. Everyone else is an apostate. And it's not getting us anywhere. It really isn't. When people leave one sect, they don't say, well, let me try a different one. They just abandon God altogether or they move completely out of the movement into something else. That isn't always true, obviously. But unfortunately, it is true too often because we're so busy trying to be right that we don't bother trying to discover if we're being righteous. We're so busy trying to win, we don't bother trying to see if we're being good. We're so busy trying to beat our neighbor that we're not focusing on loving our neighbor. If we want to have true peace, we must be a people of peace. We must become the people of the temple. I want to read this again. Become a people of the temple. Those who see violence but proclaim peace who feel conflict yet extend the hand of reconciliation, who encounter broken spirits and find pathways for healing. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. These two scriptures go hand in hand. What is the peace that Jesus has left with us? So what does it mean this Christmas season to you to know that the peace of Jesus Christ was brought into the world at his birth, regardless of when his actual birthday was? I hope that that peace can be listening more than speaking, understanding more than attacking, and ignoring opportunities for vengeance and instead embracing grace in every level. That's my message for you this week, and I leave it with you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.
We are now going to partake of the sacrament of communion. We're going to play a recording of our statement on communion. Christine is going to offer both sacrament prayers. And then afterwards, you'll have an opportunity to pause the video, partake of the sacrament, and reflect on the atonement of Jesus Christ, the peace of Jesus Christ. And then once you're done, just unpause the video, and we'll continue from there. At this time, we welcome all present to Christ's table. We invite all who would participate to do so as an expression of the peace and love of Jesus Christ, in whose name we worship. The Lord's Supper is a sacrament, a time to focus on the life, death, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. As disciples of Christ, we renew our covenants and recommit together to His mission, to grow closer to Jesus Christ, as individuals and as a community, worshiping Jesus Christ through God's Word, the sacraments, ministry, outreach, Kabbalah, and Jubilee. We encourage all that are worthy to receive communion to do so frequently and devoutly. O God, the Eternal Father, we ask Thee, in the name of Thy Son, Jesus Christ, to bless and sanctify this bread to the souls of all those who partake of it, that they may eat in remembrance of the body of thy Son, and witness unto thee, O God, the Eternal Father, that they are willing to take upon them the name of thy Son, and always remember him, and keep his commandments which he hath given them, that they may always have his Spirit to be with them. Amen. O God, the Eternal Father, we ask thee in the name of thy Son, Jesus Christ, to bless and sanctify this wine to the souls of all those who drink of it, that they may do so in remembrance of the blood of thy Son, which was shed for them, that they may witness unto thee, O God, the Eternal Father, that they do always remember him, that they may have his Spirit to be with them. Amen. I want to thank you for being with me today, whatever day of the week it is that you're watching this. I want to thank you for worshiping with me. I think it's very special that we have the technology and the opportunity to be able to worship together wherever we are in the world at the time that the Lord has provided for you personally and your family and your community to worship as one. We would like to ask a special request this week, and that is, if you've made it this far into the video, don't just like and share it. Please do like and share it. But also, please leave a comment. Let us know what brings you peace in your life in the comments on this video. Let us know what this Christmas season means to you. The things that bring you peace. So we can share in that peace together as a fellowship. I am now going to offer a closing prayer. Again, thank you for being with me today. Elohim Shaddai, we come before you at this time to thank you for the opportunity that you have blessed us with to worship together with one another through the technology that you have provided to us. Please help us to enjoy these videos and allow us to speak spirit to spirit with one another. Please help heal us so that we can begin reaching out and building, linking the chains of our lives so that we can create a strong place of safety for those in need. so that the spiritually homeless will know that this is a place of refuge. So that those suffering from spiritual PTSD will feel comfortable speaking with us, sharing their pain, and allowing us to mourn with them so that they can come out from the places where they have been broken and heal in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. And heal through the atonement and the grace of Jesus Christ. 
so that they can learn to forgive those that have done this damage to them, regardless of whether these people are willing to repent or ready to repent or not. Please bless us with peace and patience that we will allow people to grow in their own time, not trying to force them to be like us or move or walk faster than they are ready. Please bless us with the financial resources that we need to ensure that all of our bills can be paid and that we can move forward in you to do your works as you have asked us to do. We ask you to bless us with your peace that we may be the very light upon the hill that the light of your Son, the light of Christ, shines from out into the world. Help us to be the beacons. Help us to be the lighthouses that guide these ships to safety. Please fill us with your Spirit. Please prompt us. Help us to know your works and your will for us, that we may do it. Help us to travel safely to all the places you need us to go. Bless us with the opportunities to meet those seeking. Open our mouths that we will speak your words in their ears and their eyes, that they will see your message and what we have to say. Help us to grow as a people, as a fellowship, as a kingdom. So that we can move forward in the name of Christ and be representatives of Christ as you've called us to be in the ways that are pleasing unto thee. Please help us to see the peace in our lives, particularly if we are blinded by violence, war, oppression, and the other evils of men. Help us to be the peacemakers. We're so thankful that you sent your son, Jesus Christ, into the world. That we can see the living Torah. So we can partake in the atonement of his sacrifice. So that we can enjoy in the resurrection through his resurrection. Please help us to be a prophetic people, to be a people of the temple, to live the lives that make us worthy, to see our Lord and Savior face to face in this life. Please send us your apostles so that we can send them out. Please send us your council of seven so that we can send them out. Please send us your 70 so that we can send them out. So that we can reach these people that are suffering and that need us. Please help us as we strive to build the school of the prophets. So that those that you do call when they are sent out, they will know why they are sent and they will understand how to do their duties that you've called them to do. We thank you for the ministries that you've blessed us with, for the discipleship you've blessed us with, and the light that you've given us that enables us to be the seekers that we are. We thank you for the peace of Christ that you've planted in our hearts. And we pray that we can be the brothers and sisters, that we can be the people 
that you need us to be. These things we pray in the name of thy Son, Jesus Christ. So mote it be. Amen.